allow fast computation of determinants, powers, and inverses. In this video, we're going to discuss how to transform mat matrices into a diagonal form. This is an important application of the basis change we discussed in earlier sections. We want to take advantage of some of the properties of diagonal matrices. In particular, the determinant of a diagonal matrix is the product of all the terms on the main diagonal. If we take a diagonal matrix and raise it to a power, rather than having to multiply it by itself k times, we simply raise the components on the main diagonal to the power of k. To find the inverse, we simply take the reciprocal of all the elements on the main diagonal. And it's these simple applications that we want to take advantage of when we find diagonal matrices. Recall that we call two matrices, A and D, similar if there exists an invertible matrix P such that D equals P inverse AP. Now we call a matrix A diagonalizable if it's similar to some diagonal matrix D. Diagonalizing a matrix A is very similar to expressing it in terms of a new basis. As a theorem, we can say that a square matrix A can be factored into A equals PDP inverse, where P is a square n by n matrix and D is a diagonal matrix whose diagonal entries are eigenvalues of A, if and only if the eigenvectors of A form a basis in Rn. But here, here's what's going on when we find an eigen decomposition. We start at the top left. P inverse performs a basis change from the standard basis into the eigenbasis. This identifies the eigenvectors in red and orange to the standard basis vectors EI. We've rotated the, the circle. Then the diagonal D scales the vectors along these axes by eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2. Finally, P transforms these scaled vectors back into the standard canonical basis coordinates, and that's how we get lambda 1, P1, and lambda 2, P2. And we note that a symmetric matrix S can always be diagonalized. So how do we actually get an eigen decomposition? Well, first, we want to check and compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We want to check that the eigenvectors form a basis. Sometimes we can do that very quickly by just looking at them. Either times we have to do some calculations. We then construct a matrix P to diagonalize A. This matrix consists of the eigenvectors of, of A as columns of P. This then allows us to find P inverse, which happens to be P transpose, and D of the eigenvalues on the main diagonal. And so we check that A is equal to PDP inverse and we're done. Let's try an example. We'll find the eigen decomposition of matrix A, 2, 1, 1, 2. Finding the eigenvalues, we look at A minus lambda I, which means we end up with characteristic polynomial P of lambda, 2 minus lambda squared, minus 1, which we can factor to lambda minus 3, lambda minus 1 equals 0. Our first unit eigenvalue is 1 over root 2, 1, 1, our second unit eigenvalue, uh, eigenvector, is 1 over 2, 1, negative 1. So using those as our columns of P, we get 1 over 2, 1 over 2, 1 over 2, negative 1 over 2. Our D is our diagonal matrix using our eigenvalues 3 and 1. And our P inverse is the transpose of P. And so the matrix 2, 1, 1, 2 is equal to 1 over 2, 1 over 2, 1 over 2, negative 1 over 2. 
times the matrix 3, 0, 0, 1, times the matrix 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2. And it works like this in every instance. So it's fairly quick to find the eigen decomposition of a matrix A. We mentioned a couple of benefits of eigen decompositions. In particular, diagonal matrices can easily be raised to a power. Therefore, we can find the matrix power of matrix A via an eigen decomposition much quicker. A to the k is PDP inverse to the k. And if we multiply PDP inverse out a bunch of times, we see that a bunch of p's and a bunch of p inverses cancel. We end up with p d to the kp inverse, but since d is diagonal, we end up with p times the matrix with all the diagonal elements raised to the k times p inverse. To compute determinants quicker, we note that determinant a, if it has an eigen decomposition, will be equal to the determinant of p d p inverse. And that's the determinant of p, the determinant of d, and the determinant of p inverse. And of course, once we have some cancellation there, we end up with the determinant of d, which is the product of everything along the main diagonal. Eigenvalue decompositions require square matrices, and it would be super helpful to be able to do this sort of decomposition on a general matrix. Now in the next section, we'll introduce a more general matrix decomposition technique the singular value decomposition.